Hello and welcome back to Student st 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 <laughs> Welcome back to Student Nurse Boot Camp Video 2 <laughs> I can't speak today. I've had such trouble all day long. Have you ever put like two words together? I was trying to say park and back and it came out pack. I don't know. I it's Today's video <laughs> Today's video is going to be about how to present yourself at clinicals, what they expect you to look like, dress like, smell like, everything. And if something's not right, guess what? You're going home. So, of course, your instructors will go over this stuff, but I just thought I would prepare you ahead of time so nothing's a huge surprise. Maybe if you had to get something, you have enough time to plan or get, get it or whatever. Um or not get, which you will understand as soon as I get through my list. I made a list just so I wouldn't forget anything. But number one, first and foremost, and this is a duh thing, everybody does it, but you have to bathe and shower and be clean every single time before you go into clinicals. So whether you shower the night before or the morning of or take a bath or wash up, whatever, you need to be clean. And the reason being is you don't want to introduce anything new to your patients. They're already sick. Um, you know, they're not feeling good. They don't need to be introduced to anything extra that we possibly could bring in from wherever we're coming from. Not that we're nasty people. It's just, you know, you're, you're around in the Walmart, you know, you're in school, you're at home, you know, people bring things in and we want to just be as clean as possible so that we don't bring further harm to our patients or clients. And as far as the living uh, nursing facility goes, this is where they live. This is their home. So, you know, we just want to be as clean as possible. The reason I say shower again afterwards is you are in places where there is still illness and disease and such, and you don't want to bring and introduce new things home to your family as well. So we need to be clean before and after. So when you get home, you know, I recommend a def diff couple different pairs of scrubs, uniforms, so that, you know, if you can't possibly get to the laundromat, if you don't have your own washing facilities at your house, then you have a couple clean uniforms ready to go in case you have back-to-back -back clinicals. So what I would do is I would come home and I would shower and then I would wash my uniform right away so that it was ready for the next day. I would go ahead and just get it ironed and everything once um, it was okay. My husband's going to watch this once he washed it. He's awesome. He does the laundry. He really does. It's pretty cool. I do iron my own stuff though. So no, that was just one thing he really has helped me out with since I started back to school. Uh, he's really picked up the bar with uh, helping out around the house. So yes, he does the laundry. Whoop, kudos. Okay, of course we want to keep our teeth clean and our breath fresh as possible. So, you know, you can't chew gum when you're in clinicals. That's why I always recommend having the breath spray or tiny, tiny mints. I don't like the mints just because, you know, they can fall out of your mouth. I just tend to talk and laugh a lot, so I don't want things flying out of my mouth. I know that sounds horrible, but I just, you know, I have the Listerine breath spray, so that's good to have. Hair has to be clean, of course, but it also needs to be, for men, um, short and tidy. Neck has to be shaved, and our boys are not allowed facial hair. So I don't know about your school or, you know, where you're going. And once you start working, I know that that's different. It can be kept clean and tidy. Nurse Mendoza has... Um, mustache beard thing going on and he keeps it very tidy and clean but um, as far as our nursing school goes we weren't a, guys can't have the facial hair um, the girls hair has to be up off the collar pinned back if you spray it the spray which I recommend just because you wispies you know you get hot and everything it's just nice to have it clean and kept back and tidy it just looks more professional but also um, Pay attention to what hairsprays you use. They need to be unscented, okay, because we have patients and clients with allergies, emphysema, you know, breathing treatments and such. So <clears throat> we need to be very sensitive as to what we put on our bodies. They really should be unscented on the days that we go to clinicals. Hair. Oh, just covered hair. Natural nails. Your nails have to be natural nails. You can't have press-on nails. You can't have acrylic nails. I'm sorry. I know, I know, I know. We love our fingernails. And they also have to be short. And so how you judge that when people say, well, how short? We were taught to look at our palms. So I'll face, as you were looking at my fingers, they can't show above your finger. So see, I have some nails here I would have to clip before I go to clinicals. And they need to be clean underneath. 
And the worst part is no nail polish. I love me some nail polish now, but no, no nail polish, not even clear on the days that you're going to be in the hospital. As far as class goes, I think, you know, you have to ask your instructors. I think that goes from um, school to school or whatever. Some are very strict with no nail polish whatsoever while you're in nursing school, in school, in class, and in the clinical setting. Others um, might allow light, natural colors in class. It all just depends on your facility, so you need to uh, ask them and get with them. Jewelry. Nada. None. We were not allowed any jewelry. Wedding Well, I take that back. We weren't allowed any rings whatsoever. Okay, not even a wedding band. For the reasons of not only working with equipment, you know, things can get snagged and pulled and stuff. You know, you're working with Hoyer lifts in the, which you'll learn what those are, in their nursing care facilities and such, but um, there's lots of other reasons. But also, when we're working with elderly patients, or very young children and babies, their skin is very thin and tender and fragile. Not to mention, you know, patients who just have skin problems or maybe burns or wounds. You don't want to take the chance of nicking and scratching them with your rings. Uh, we do it to ourselves, you know, and get things caught. You know, your rings can even get caught on clothing and such. So no rings at all. We were not allowed bracelets, except for we could have our watch uh, with the band, of course, because you have to have a watch with a second hand. We were not allowed any necklaces and only one pair of stud earrings for the females. So if you have multiple piercings, facial piercings, tongue piercings, anything that shows. I don't want to know what's going on piercing-wise under the clothes, <laughs> but as far as what shows, Everything had to be out except for one stud pair of earrings for the girls. Guys, we're not allowed to have earrings in their ears. Sorry. Tattoos cannot be showing as well. Um, so if you have sleeved arms, you know, tattoos on your neck, you have to get them covered. I have a classmate who has awesome tattoos going up his arms, but he also had these white, and they were just sleeves. They just came up to here. They went from his wrist to mid-shoulder, and then his and then his scrubs top came down a little bit over that, but it was just white. It was like a nylon material, not sure where he got them from, but I'm sure you can find them online. I'm sure tattoo stores know where you can get them as well. Um, I also know there's some good heavy duty cover makeup, like theatrical stores. Um, I'm sure in Sephora and, and things like that, there's good heavy sturdy makeup, but I also know at bridal stores, Bridal shops, they have makeup because a lot of brides don't want their bridesmaids to have tattoos showing. And I saw that firsthand. A cousin of mine had to go to a bridal store to get her flower on her shoulder covered up because the bride said no tattoo showing. So, And it covered it very well, actually. So when you're right up close on it, sometimes you could kind of tell it was there. But far away, it, it didn't look like she had anything on. Okay, so... Now we're on to perfume, and that's a part of my my morning routine. It's I have to really stop myself because I just do it. So on days you have clinicals, when you're in the nursing facility, nursing care, nursing home, hospital, clinic, doesn't matter, no perfume. Again, just for sensitivity reasons. There's, again, people with breathing problems and, and such like that. Um, shoes. Shoes need to be all leather. And as far as shiny patent leather, I don't know. That's something you need to personally ask your your clinical instructors. But we were told all leather. And absolutely, if you can find... And I know there are tennis shoes that are all leather because I have some classmates that wear them. But they can't have any holes or canvas or anything on the shoe. It had to be pure leather. And the reason being is because of bodily fluids. You know, you're working with blood and urine and stuff. And you just don't want that squishing down into your shoes and walking around in that all day long so uh, keep that in mind they also had to be closed toe closed heel so no slingbacks no slip-ons clogs crocs things like that they had to be with a shoe uh, with a toe and a heel now as far as our classroom was concerned they didn't care what we wore we could wear regular colored tennis shoes if we wanted to um, they understand you know some people wanted to save their nice shoes for clinicals I wore my nursing shoes every day I invested in them I love them I wore them and they just made my feet feel great not once did I ever think man my feet are killing me and I think partly besides the shoes I had Timberland Pro I will put the link in the description bar down below where you can find them online 
I got mine at my local uniform store, but for those of you that maybe don't have one around or can't find them, I, I did find a link this morning with them, so I'll post that below. But I also wore the white compression stockings. Love them. Ugly as all get out, but your legs will thank you. <laughs> Again, I didn't really think about my legs aching or anything, and they they're knee highs, and I, I know I've seen them at Walmart. You can I, I just got them at the uniform store. They were like six fifty. You can order them from allheart.com and other uniform supply shops online as well. But I highly recommend them. They are wonderful, um, and they're really going to save your feet and your legs. Your uniform, of course, has to be clean from you know food stains and pet hair is very important so that's why I suggest keeping a lint roller with you or at least double checking yourself before you get out of the car um, they need to be you know washed and dried from previous clinical settings like I said but also if you don't have an iron you know at least run it through the dryer for 10 minutes or something you just don't want to look like you're you slept in them and you're rolling out of the bed all creased up and crinkly, just not professional looking at all. You want to remember that you're not only representing yourself and your school and your um, classmates, but you never know who's watching. You never know. You can come down, Eric. You never know who's around looking at you and not only your job performance, but how you present yourself and what persona you take on. You know, they might offer you a job someday. You never, never know. Oh, back to the shoes, too. Also, because they're leather, you're going to want to get a thing of white shoe polish. If you're Robin, you know, I'm scuffing up my toes. I'm, I don't even know how I do it. I just do it. Um, but like I said, I wear mine every single day. I wear them in class and I wear them in the clinical setting. So you have to get some uh, white shoe polish and just make sure the scuffs are cov covered up. Sorry, I forgot that part. And a part of your uniform is having your badge and your ID and your CPR card with you. We were not a allowed to wear the lanyards around your neck. We had to get the reels, the badge reels, where they just pull, you know, the, they hook onto your pocket or um, up high. Actually, we had to wear ours up high once we were in the clinical setting because you're, um, it needed to be at eye face level. So with lanyards, you know, you're bending over your clients. They can pull them. Uh, they could get caught on something. So uh, the reels were just what we were um, expected to wear. And it is part of your uniform so we would be sent home if we didn't have ours with us. I think the first time they just kind of did a hand slap like you need it next time or you're being sent home but after that nobody forgot theirs. Undergarments. I know it sounds silly but you need to listen to me because <laughs> it's for real it's no joke. Especially if you're wearing light colored um, you know some schools I hear have light blue Many, many of us wear partly white or all white. So we were even told right down to what style. It w okay, I'm just going to say it. Girls in our school were not allowed to wear thongs with our clinical uniform. Or even in school. Don't know the particular situations, but there were particular situations to where they had to make that stipulation. So, if you're wearing white. Please pay attention to the color of underwear and bra that you're wearing. It needs to be skin color, non-showing, at least if also if you're wearing, because we have dark green pants, but our tops are white and our material's a little on the thin side. So I would always wear a neutral color, um, either cami, which, you know, had the thin straps or a tank top. Um, I had a, quite a few of those. So if one was in the wash, I had others. Um, besides just wearing the natural skin tone bra. Um, if it doesn't show, wear whatever color panties you want to, but um, if your pants are white, they had to be, you know, brief style, you know, just no thongs, okay, and neutral color. And guys, same thing. If you're wearing a t-shirt, um, you know, make sure it's um, white, v-neck if you have the v-neck you know it needs to match we were allowed to wear one long sleeved white t-shirt underneath during the winter or if you were just cold or you just wanted extra protection from whatever but it couldn't be that awesome tissue tea material i love it it looks kind of um uh it's it, it looks patchy it's kind of see-through in some places and and opaque in other places but no we had to have the solid cotton or you know nylon or whatever it could be the under armor uh, that you can find in the sports stores that keep you nice and cool or nice and warm, depending. Um, I, I never had troubles being cold because 
even that little camisole or um, tank top helped keep me warm. But you're nervous, you're running around, you're doing things. So I never got cold in the clinical setting. But I hope this helps um, help, helps you with what you need for clinicals, how to present yourself. I know a lot of this is just common sense, but some people don't realize about the shoes. Some people don't realize about, you know... Um, you know, a long sleeve t-shirt. Some people think they can have fake nails as long as they're short. You cannot. So these are just things. Um, if you were planning a tattoo or a piercing or something, you might want to wait for a long break to where it could heal or um, as far as piercings go to where you have that six weeks or whatever to where you can take, you know, summertime or just save it for a long vacation before you get, get one of those. So rate, comment, and subscribe. I am having more videos coming out. I hope to get two to three out a week up until school starts. There's so much to cover. Again, just to give you basics to get you ready so you're not hearing everything quite for the first time. Um, so you're a little familiar and you can hang a little bit better with uh, lecture. So I love you all and I will see you at the next video. Bye.